Hey guys, welcome back to another video of Vector for E. coli. So in this video, we'll be moving ahead from the previous discussed topic. So let's get started. So in this video, we'll be talking about PUC18 plasmid cloning vector. So this is a very important talking when we talk about cloning vector for E. coli. So let's uh, come to its basic and let's talk some of its uh, basic terms. So the name PUC18 conforms with the standard rules for vector nomenclature. P indicates that it's a plasmid definitely UC identifies the laboratory in which the vector was originally constructed. UC indicates a uh, stands for University of California and 18 is the distinguishing number which differs it from other black cloning vectors. So this was the basic information all about PUC18. So moving on from there on. So these are some of the properties of PUC18 plasmid vector. So as you can see a clear picture of the PUC18 plasmid vector. So let's so let's get started with this. So the size of this vector is 2.68 kb. The vector this vector is developed from PVR322, which we have already discussed. And also this vector contains ampicillin resistant gene, multiple cloning sites, and origin of replication with a laxative region. All the three types, the ampicillin resistant gene, the multiple cloning site, as well as the origin of replication is very important for being a cloning vector, as well as it has a laxative gene. I'll explain the importance in the later part of the video, uh, the importance of laxative gene and everything. Also, an MCS, uh, a multiple cloning site, increases the number of potential cloning strategies available by extending the range of enzymes that can be used to generate a restriction fragrance suitable for cloning. Also, by combining them with an MCS, the site are made contiguous so that any two sites with it can be cleaved simultaneously without exertion vector sequences. So this is very simple. So there no need to there no need that any two sites which can be cleaved simultaneously without exertion the vector sequences. So the, coming to the next point, which is the P uh, puck vector, also incorporate a DNA sequence that permits rapid visual visual detection of an insert all right so puck vector also incorporated dna sequence any of the foreign dnc or foreign dna sequence that uh, permits a rapid visual detection of an insert all right so this is very important uh, whenever incorporating a dna sequence also the mcs is inserted in the laxate zine this ends uh, the mcs thing is uh, present in the laxate region which will help us in the uh, in screening processes all right and also the uh, insertion of the MCS into the laxate fragment does not affect the ability of alpha peptide to mediate complementation, but cloning DNA would definitely affect. So I'll be explaining all the complementation and uh, things are related to laxate in the later part of the video. So moving on from there on, let's talk about the insertion and activation of laxate gene. So earlier we studied about the insertion and activation of tetracycline gene. So in this we'll be studying about insertion and activation of laxate region. All right, so let's go through this. So cloning with PUC18 involves insertion and activation of laxate zine. All right. Also with the uh, recombinant identified because of the inability to synthesize beta galactosidase. Uh, beta galactosidase. Also, this is a very important point to note that the laxate zine is responsible for the synthesis of beta galactos galactosidase with the help of IPTG, which I'll be explaining the further part of the video. So, uh, also, so beta galactosidase is one of the series of enzymes involved in the what is the use of uh, beta galactosidase is involved in the breakdown of lactose to glucose plus galactose. All right, so from lactose to glucose plus galactose, it is normally coded by the laxate gene which resides on the E. coli chromosome. So, uh, E. coli and beta galactosidase is very important. Uh, the presence of e. coli, uh, laxate gene is very important for the synthesis of beta galactosidase which is involved in the breakdown of lactose to glucose from lactose to glucose plus galactose also the third point which says that the some strains of e coli have a modified laxate zine all right so some strains of e coli which have a modified laxate zine on the laxate segment referred to as the laxate and coding for the alpha peptide portion of uh, galactosidase so i'll read this point again for a clear confirmation so some strains of E. coli have a modified laxate gene, all right, and one that lacks a segment is referred to as a laxate, 
and coding for alpha peptide portion of uh, beta galactosidase. So it's a simple thing. So those who have modified lactose and one that lacks is referred to as lactose and coding for alpha peptide portion of beta galactosidase. Yes. And one more important point is uh, beta galactosidase is synthesized on the alpha peptide portion through which it can uh, through which it involves the breakdown of sugars as we have known here from lactose to glucose plus galactose. So coming to the fourth point, uh, these mutants can synthesize the enzyme only when they harbor a plasmid. All right. So these mutants, the laxate region can only synth can synthesize the enzyme or all of these uh, synthesis and breakdown happens only when they are present in a plasmid such as pacetine in this case. So laxate is present in pacetine and thus beta galactosidase and everything happens. All right. So without the presence of a plasmid, these uh, activities won't be possible. All right. Uh, also, the four, fifth point is that cloning experiment with Pakiti involves selection of trans uh, transformants on amphetamine and agar followed by screening for beta galactosidase activity to identify recombinants. Yeah, this is one of the important points which I said, uh, which I'll be ex explaining in the later part of the video. So, a cloning vector with Pakiti involves selection of uh, transformants on amphetamine and agar followed by screening for beta galactosidase with the help of laxate region and everything. And also the second last point which says that the cells that harbor a normal pacetine plasmid are ampicillin resistant and are able to synthesize functional beta galactosidase. This is an important point to remember that which are normal pacetine plasmid are ampicillin resistant and they grow uh, in ampicillin resistant. They are very much growing in that and able to synthesize functional beta galactosidase. And cells that harbor recombinants are ampicillin resistant as well but are unable to make beta galactosidase because of the inactivation of laxate zine. Alright, so laxate thing is very important for uh, synthesis, for carrying synthesis function of beta galactosidase. So when the laxate scene gets off, gets inactivated due to insertional activities, the recombinants are not resistant and are not able to make galactosidase, not resistant to that parts where it synthesizes the galactosidase. Also, they have to be amphetamine resistant in both the cases because amphetamine is uh, functionally very much activated. So moving on from there. So let's talk about the screening of recombinants. The main part which I'm talking about. So talking about this, the functional beta galactosidase dissociates the lactose analog called exgal. So the functional beta galactosidase, which is the, the which is uh, which happens to the presence of laxate zine. So it dissociates the lactose analog. How the breakdown happens? Let's talk about. So from lactose, it dissociates the lactose analog called exgal. So exgal is this 5-bromo-4-chloro-3-indole beta d galactopyranocyte to a product called product that is deep blue colored. All right. So from lactose, it breaks. Uh, dissociates the lactose analog called exgal, which breaks to a deep colored product. So from this first point, we formed a got a deep colored product. So from the second point, non-recombinant clones make beta galactosidase because which are non-recombinant ones, they will be definitely forming a beta galactosidase because they are not part of the insertional activities, uh, which dissociates exgal in the presence of induce of the enzyme such as IPDG. This is isopropyl thiogalactosidase or IPDG to a color deep blue product. So blue color are observed on LB agar amphetamine exgal IPDG plate. So this is one of the important points that functional beta galactosidase dissociates a uh, lactose analog called exgal to a deep color product. So this is the basic point for both of it, the recombinant ones as well as non-recombinant ones. So talking about non-recombinant one in this case, so the non-recombinant cl uh, one cl uh, clones make functional beta galactosidase, which dissociates exgal in the presence of IPTG to a deep colored product. So blue color is observed when they are poured in this plate. And talking about recombinant ones, recombinants with disrupted laxate are unable to make uh, functional beta galactosidase in mutant E. coli cells. So therefore, white colonies are observed on this, this on the same plate, on the same LB agar amphetamine exgal IPTG plate. So this, is, this is called uh, alpha complementation of blue white screening. So we get two colors like blue and this case white. So white ones are the recombinant ones which do not, uh, which are not able to synthesize beta galactosidase because of the insertion and inactivation of lysine C, whereas the non-recombinant ones can form. And therefore, they form blue colonies and the recombinant ones form white colonies. So 
let's talk about the last part of it uh, how uh, advantages is packet in over pbr322 so it forms high copy of plasmid number uh, chan chance mutation with origin replication results in the plasmid having high copy number around 500 700 even before amplification this is a huge number also coming to the second point which is the single step screening of recombinant so this provides fast screening and both antigen resistance and the presence or absence of beta galactosides are tested on for single accord plate the two screening are therefore carried out together and there is no need for the time consuming replica plating for that is necessary in pbr322 that we have very much seen that we pour in two plates two different plates first we try with ampicillin then we try with agar in this we singly we simply pour in one plate which contains all of the mediums so that um, diff- uh, the recombinants and non recombinants can be differentiated and thirdly presence of multiple cloning sites uh, the clustering of uh, restriction sites which allow a dna fragment with two different sticky ends see co r1 and one and bam each one of the other to be cloned without resorting to additional manipulation such as linkers here we will be talking about linkers and everything in the coming videos so that's it from this video and thank you for watching this video stay tuned for more